And welcome back to the Jason Show Home Edition. Our hot dish continues with our insider to the stars. I haven't been able to say that since the pandemic started. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us from his extra bedroom, it's Dax Hold, everyone. Hello, Dax. Hello, my friend. I love your extra bedroom, too. I know. Uh, again, I used to make fun of you, and now look. Now we're both <laughs> uh, we're both in extra bedrooms. Um, congratulations. Your new site. Uh, uh, refresh everyone's memory. What's your new site's name? So it's the Hollywood uh, Raw Podcast. Is so uh you guys were everywhere. I got alerts from you when I did the radio show. Your story went nuts. Explain what story and what happened. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the podcast has just been crazy over the last few weeks. But uh, we actually had Steve Stanulis, who is an actor, writer, producer on our podcast the other day. But he also happens to be Kanye West, former bodyguard, and he has had a fascinating life. He started off in the NYPD. He was also a Chippendales dancer for a little bit. Then he became a bodyguard, started off his bodyguard career with Leonardo DiCaprio at the height of his Titanic career, then uh, was with him for a while. He worked with Alanis Morissette, worked with Michael Stipe, worked with Stephen Baldwin, uh, Woody Harrelson. I mean, he's worked with kind of everyone, but a lot of his really interesting stories came from his days with Kanye West. And it all started when he was, uh, I, I guess, commissioned to work with him during Fashion Week in Paris. And he just... He went into those wild stories about, I mean, we all know Kanye's a little eccentric and wild and egotistical and all that kind of stuff. But he was saying, you know, day one of meeting them, he was in an elevator with them. And Kanye looks at him and is like, are you going to push what button so we can go to the floor? And he's like, I literally just met you. I have no idea what floor we're going to. Uh, and he goes, well, and he just starts ranting and raving and saying, you know, how they're wasting time. And so Steve said, look, you got three options here. One, you tell me what button to push, I'll push it. Option two, you push the button and then I'll know what floor we're going to next. Or three, you continue to tell me how important your time is and we don't ever go anywhere. <laughs> and it was stories like this that were fascinating. Um, and, and so I, I encourage you, listen to the Hollywood Rod podcast. I've got an hour of talking to this guy, which... He's got some great stories. Okay, was there anything like, okay, he's a pill. Like you said, uh, we've known that for years. Did he have any, was he basically positive though? Did he say, because I heard he say, I, I rolled this clip of, of your podcast. He said that one of the good things is he's a hard worker, right, Dax? Yes, so we played a game with him at one point because he has worked with so many celebs, whether that's in bodyguarding, whether it's in acting, because he's actually starring in a, mo a new movie with Tara Reid. So he's kind of been with everyone. But we played a game which was like, name that celeb. So we would go down a list and say, who's the hardest worker? Who's the craziest? Who's the worst tipper? And so he did give that category to Kanye West. He said he is the hardest worker I have ever been around. I want people to listen to the podcast, but you know how I feel uh, as an ex-server. Do you remember who they, he said was a horrible tipper? Yeah, he actually gave that one to Kanye. <laughs> oh, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Kanye won quite a few categories, and I think that Kanye was just a ve very memorable person to him. Uh, but he did award, like I think the nicest person went to Tobey Maguire really yeah wow okay i don't you know what i know i will never understand the tipping thing if i had i've said this so if i had stupid money and i mean stupid money wouldn't that just be a good joy of your life like i know uh, chelsea handler does that and amy schumer is famous for doing it. wouldn't you just tip these people it wouldn't mean anything to you but for that server it would change their month I, exactly absolutely and uh when it comes to best tipping we did ask that and he said it was leonardo dicaprio and his friends so it was like leonardo dicaprio toby mcguire lucas haas like that group of friends that used to be kind of out rolling the streets together next uh aaron carter you had on the podcast uh what did he this guy this dude has lived an interesting life very interesting life. I mean, fascinating. Obviously, there's been a lot of drama with him, his famous brother, Nick Carter, the whole family as a whole, because I mean, there's been uh, restraining orders put against Aaron Carter. But you got to realize this kid was insanely famous, insanely rich, 
by like the age of 13. So he's had a, you know, a full life by the age of 13. Um, but we talked all about how he got into the music industry, you know, where his relationship stands with his family right now. And he blames a lot of the problems that he has on his brother. And it comes down to jealousy. That's what he's kind of chalked it up to saying that, you know what, my brother was crazy successful with the Backstreet Boys. And then Aaron Carter comes up and does this solo career. And, you know, his his solo career was much bigger than his brother's solo career. And I and he kind of says that that was the reason that the tension started came with jealousy and then it kind of has just spiraled out of control there. Um, he says he still loves his brother. You know, he wishes that things could work out, um, but it's just, it, it's not at a place right now where it's doable. Um, it, and he goes on to with his addictions. He had a, a huffing addiction for a while, talked all about that. So uh, again, another very fascinating interview with someone who has been, his whole life has been chronicled. How can you, I mean, you're a kid and you're looking at your brother. Uh, how could you not be affected by that? Yeah, I, I listen. I think there is something to be said about civil, uh, you know, sibling rivalry. But this is on a whole other scale because you've got millions of dollars, you've got millions of fans, and you're competing with one another. And it's funny that to even think that Nick would be somewhat jealous of Aaron because the Backstreet Boys were the most famous band in the world for a while. Finally, we have a uh, just over a minute and a half, and you know I like to uh, I I have no shame in admitting that I insta stalk you sometimes, and <laughs> I'm gonna pull up a little video here. This is uh, Dax Holt doing exercises uh, by his pool. Dax, would you like to explain to the good people of Minnesota and Wisconsin and Iowa and I don't know wherever we else uh, what are you doing here, Dax? Well, this is how I stay fit during, uh, you know, this pandemic. You got to stay fit. You got to stay active and flexible. And so I spend my time during the day, you know, sitting by the pool and and keeping my back stretched out. Yeah. Um, Dax, I've uh, I've seen you in person. Uh, I've seen you in person. And not that I've looked at your legs, but I've looked at your legs. And your legs are not those that not that hairy, Dax. Uh, uh, I'm just saying. I do admit that, you know, from the waist up, uh, I am like a 12 year old unhairy boy. Um, but look at my legs there. No, it's <laughs> those happen to be. <laughs> I, and if you watch the video, I can't stop laughing. I, I know that's so what I hard. love. It's like a Carol Burnett skit. You cannot keep a straight face <laughs> because the whole time I'm realizing how ridiculous it is that I'm doing this uh, right now. Uh, so I, I couldn't keep it together. But those are those are my brother in law's legs there. That is nuts. You can follow Dax Holt <laughs> on social media, Dax Holt. And then uh, uh, social media, Hollywood, where do they look up, Dax? Yeah, you go to Hollywood Raw. You can find it anywhere, podcast or stream, uh, iTunes, Spotify, kind of anywhere that uh, you can get your podcast. And it's, like I said, it's been doing really great. We've got, uh, I guess, the founder of Media Takeout on, and he reveals a lot of interesting facts about how he started up his huge blog. Dax, hold everybody. Thank you, buddy. We're going to take a break. We're going to be back right after this. So stay right there. Back in a moment.